So good morning from uh, a zero degree, a very cold morning on Thirlmere. So this morning I've just been driving along this back road here as usual, coming to check out various things and uh, well the tree in my previous video but that's uh, that's changed now from uh, it's uh, it's autumn clothing there's a lot of snow around this morning so I thought that would be nice with the backdrop of snow but as I've uh, decided to forget about that and move on I've noticed this small section of trees down um, on Thirlmere and it's a place I've wanted to stop and photograph for a while and I think today is going to be the day so I just turn you around there and you can see what I'm talking about so I'm going to set up and I'm going to go for that I think because that looks absolutely fantastic to me so I've not shot this before but I'm feeling uh, well there's it looks like there's a path what runs down there so I'm going to shoot from up here first to get this higher vantage point and then I might have a wander down that path and just see what I can get there because the colours down there are absolutely stunning. It's nice with the light up on the um, the fells above there as well or the crag above there so I'll get set up and we'll we'll see what it looks like through the viewfinder. Okay, so I'm lifting myself up quite high on this uh, on my tripod because I need to get above this wire fence in the foreground. And I'm not quite doing that there, so I'm going to have to adjust myself a little bit. I think that might do it. There we go. Absolutely fantastic. Okay, we'll take a first shot and see how that looks. Okay, so... Just analysing my composition here to see if there's anything else I can do with it. I think I'd benefit from putting a, a filter on there just to uh, dial the sky back. I'll just take another shot while I'm doing that. We can see what we've got there. We've got the uh, foregrounds in amazing colour at the minute. Bit uh, no direct sunlight on the on the foreground there though, but there is on the the crag side should we say further up ahead and obviously the sky's a bit brighter as well it's uh, it's not too long after sunrise about an hour after sunrise now so um, things are brightening up a bit but I think if I just put this filter on it it'll allow me to balance the scene a little bit better in camera and angle it onto its side there Oh, that's a lot better. Okay, and we'll take that and see how that comes out. That's fantastic. It's uh, the colours. The colours there are great. It's uh, it's a typical autumnal shot. That very nice. I say so myself. Okay. Well, how could how could that be improved in my mind? Well, it would be nice just to get a bit of a bit of light on the fell side there, which uh, I might just be a bit too late for that. Or it might be too early. So 
actually one of the quandaries you face when you're in a situation like this is how long do you give give a composition how long do you give a scene because you know like driving up here this morning everywhere everywhere looks fantastic and i typically choose to come to an area in shade but um that's the price you pay when you, when you do uh when you focus on one area you know you you've got to buy you've got to have the strength to go past the uh the other beauty spots i guess okay well i'm i'm going to give it a i'm going to give it a few minutes and see how it pans out one one of the things i i'm trying to work on with um my landscape photography is discipline and and what i mean by that is being able to commit to one thing and stick at it rather than running around like a headless chicken and doing too many i mean you'll you'll notice from my vlog so far that i do take quite a lot of shots when i'm when i'm in a location and that's intentional you know because i don't do that in the hope that i'll get something i do that because in that moment i connect with that scene and i want to capture it and it's similar to this you know it's i think there's a lot of potentially you know how long how you know how many images can you make of this and how long do you give it and being disciplined to me is looking at the long term picture of it you know because to, to me it's all about creating something what you connect with in a, in a legacy thing and I, I think you feel more of a connection when you work harder towards something I think and it, it tends to for me anyway you know we can all get lucky snapshots in a you know in the right place at the right time but I think when you've intentionally gone somewhere repeatedly and worked and worked so then when you do get the result it works out quite well and you know I've only been here what five or so minutes and you can see the top of this fell up here just starting to light up a bit now and it would be too easy just to say oh this isn't working let's go somewhere else but you know just give it a minute and you don't know what's going to happen and what's going to appear and you know nothing might happen but then look what's happening now something quite often does and it's quite important i think you know to be in location ready to do that ready to take advantage of it and uh you know witness what's happening in front of you as well all too often you know you see landscape photographers rushing around and trying to get from one location to another and I get that you know I, I know the excitement of that and the appeal but for me I want to be disciplined and find something and really work at it I think it could be a lot more rewarding in terms of the process but also the output as well I think just that patch of light there what you can see on the crag up there with uh, those tall Scots pine trees it just brings that whole scene up doesn't it really it really adds something special to that this the color down there is just absolutely amazing especially round onto the bank as well it's uh, it's fantastic see this um this bank here um will never probably get direct sunlight not this time of year i don't think anyway because we've got the Helvellyn range behind us here which has got a light dusting of snow and the sun is that so that's to the east and the sun is obviously set is rising behind that and there's a valley um in between the Helvellyn range if you will where it tails off and you've got um you've got a dip where you come over the road over Dunmail Race and that's where the sun's going to shine through uh when it's low this time of year and it's shining through that gap now and it's managing to illuminate this so it's it's never going to be able to illuminate the foreground because of just because of the the terrain you know and the topology of the, the fells over in the background so maybe this is as good as i'm going to get so it's going off now and uh, it's moving around here and this is raven crag up here which is a fantastic uh, crag there it's i've never been up there but it look there's an amazing view from the top of there a lot of people camp up there as well yeah raven crag maybe one for future exploration okay well i've got a couple of good shots from there which uh well 
I'm hoping they're going to be good but um, what I might just do is I might just have a wander down that path and we can see if uh, anything is to see down there although I suspect having this higher vantage point here is going to give us a lot more of a, a nicer perspective I like how you've got the um, the varying trees as well you've got all these birch trees uh, some have lost the leaves completely on the on the side of the water and then you've got these coniferous trees thrown in amongst them and then you've got this bank of Scots pines over to the side there it's absolutely fantastic yeah the water's uh, becoming a bit more ripply as well now what I might try and do is I might try and go for a bit of a panoramic shot so if I move if I just move up here a tiny bit I don't want to lose the effect of this foreground and especially with the the path in the foreground there so I'll see if I can see if I can just take a shot while allow me to produce a, a wide perspective there we go it's good good the sun's come out again so that's that's great so I hope that image is going to convey what I'm feeling right now, which is overwhelmingly positivity for this scene. This scene's just fantastic. I'm, uh, I must have driven past this 200, 300 times, and uh, I might have photographed it once a very long time ago, but I focused on the, the dam over there, so you can see that's the, uh, the wall of the dam on Thirlmere. Uh, this, all this section of the this road has been closed off for a couple of years so it's um, I've been doing a lot of forestry work I think so it's not a place I've been to for a long time well not with my camera anyway so uh, we'll see right what what I think I might try and do as well is I'll level this off and I think I'm going to go for A much wider stitch panel we've got a tree there so that's gonna that's gonna spoil my perspective but it'll buy me some some more land to be able to uh, to widen this out it's it is a really beautiful beautiful setup that there's, there's a lot to be pleased about photographically so what we can see happening now as well is the sun is illuminating the crag more so as the sun's rising obviously more of the uh, the land there is becoming illuminated which i think is going to work to my advantage i think moving down here slightly as well has given me more emphasis on i'm going to get my um more emphasis on on the water i'm going to put my a solid ND filter on to lengthen my exposure time. I don't think my filter sat correctly there. Right, there we go. The reason I want to do that is because I, I would like to try and I would like a much longer shutter time to to blur out the, the ripples in the water it's that's an eight second exposure and we'll see uh, see what effect that has there's very little wind today so yeah that's a bit more pleasing it shouldn't affect us too much that's a that's a really nice shot to me I, I quite like these shots where you've you've got part of the um, the water and part of the land you know it's not all one it's not all water it's not all land there's a there's a mixture so it gives you that change in texture if you will um but yeah it's nice there's a little robin there beautiful okay right well it's difficult to know and this is what, what I was referring to about the discipline. It's difficult to know how long you give something. But I think what I think I think what I've achieved so far is more than I was expecting. So it's already a win. It's just got so it's got to be worth a wander down there just to see if uh, there's another perspective to be had. 
Uh, got a little audience here, the tiny little robin sat watching us. And uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. So I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna take a wander down there then, and we'll uh, we'll see what comes of it and. Uh, See if we get a bit more light, see if the light lowers itself down a bit and see what there is along that little path there. Okay, so we're going to have a look down here now and see if a change in perspective brings anything different out. Fantastic, look at that. Just dropping down a, a couple of metres there is has opened that out significantly hasn't it right well, i'm going to come back up there so i can always shoot that again in a minute so i'll just have a wander down here and see if this lower perspective from the path um presents us with anything different we're still getting patches of sunlight on the crag above so that's that's great there's still potential for an interesting image So you've got all these um, these plants and things that are dying off and going white with all the uh, the leaves on it. It's just there's a, such a mixture of colour. Ah, you see, what's happened now is we've dropped down, and it just doesn't have the same feel from down here. It's uh, it's still lovely, but it's not. Um, there doesn't seem to be anything visually to pull your eye through the scene and up to the crag above and you're kind of lost in all this colour so I'm I'm thinking I've already just immediately kind of lose the feel for the scene so it really does have to be shot from back there I think I think that perspective on the on the steps we've just come down is probably going to be the best the best shot but yeah do you know what I'm not going to carry on down there look at that up there that's Raven Crag such a towering slab of rock all those tr single trees on the top as well they'd make for fantastic focal points wouldn't they okay so let's head back so this up here um, the fell in the background with the dusting of snow that's that's called little man and that's just uh, in front of hell velen which and this is all the hell velen range what runs along uh, north to south if you will and you can see the extremely bright cloud there now which is as the sun's rising there's uh, the clouds illuminating as it's behind it it's there's a dusting of snow all across these fells that's dale head down there and uh, it'll be a nice day today, very cold still. I think it was just below freezing when I set off and about zero degrees when I got here. So uh, pretty cold. But see, this is nice as well, where you've got that outcrop of rock there and uh, the high fells above it with the nice cloud. I, I don't think that'll make a nice photograph though, because it's a bit too it probably would but maybe not in this light so i think what i'm going to do then is i'm going to get back onto the, s the steps i'm going to hope this light continues to stay on the crag behind i'm going to take that shot and then i think i'm going to leave it there for this morning and uh, see what happens after that but um like i say it's all about the discipline of choosing an area for, well for me anyway I'm not telling you what to do for me it's about choosing an area and investing in that area until you're satisfied with what you've got and I think if I can make an image from here this morning when I was laid in bed an hour ago I didn't have this image and and now I do so I've got to be happy with that haven't I Okay, well, I'll get set up and we'll uh, take another quick shot there and uh, see how that turns out. Okay, so 
I'm improvising a little bit with with this video with this how I'm filming this but hopefully you'll get the idea so I'm just going to zoom in on the screen and focus on those branches in the foreground that will give me my hyperfocal distance at f22 in fact I'll go to f25 and I've composed it so that the, the bottom of the steps and the path is leading through the scene we've got the foreground trees and then there's the crag above which is really getting quite illuminated now so I'm hoping this is going to come out so here we go yeah wonderful that really good that's a really strong autumn image I think in terms of colour certainly okay so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to see if I can see if I turn my camera there I've, if I turn slightly that way I get the water in into the left, right hand side and if I turn that way I get that branch or the big tree trunk into the into the left hand side and I think both of them quite spoil the image so I can't quite get rid of both of them so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that again and I'm just going to crop into that image from uh, adjust my filter there make sure it's positioned correctly so I'll go for that again with an idea to refining the composition in, in post production there by simply cropping out some distracting elements at the end of uh, the frame on either side so there's the original shot there and you can see the the tree trunk on the left and the shore on the right and then I'll crop that in so we can uh, see what it looks like I don't really want to lose the top of that Scots pine tree though on the uh, top left corner so I might make a slight adjustment So I'm losing the path if I do that. Right, I'm going to have to move back a tiny bit. Again, another another thing about using a prime lens. Oh, we've got a dog and a runner here. Hiya. Good morning. You all right? Thank you. No problem. Thanks. There we go. Right. So I've just really shot that now. What we're finding now is the foreground it is actually getting the light as you'll see there from that shot which is really bringing it to life so I think I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to head back up to the road because I think that's probably the best perspective okay so I'm back up on back up on the uh, the roadside I'm just going to have to quickly find I want to act quick now because I think I'll be quite fed up if that um, that light goes before I've had a chance to snap it there you go five seconds let's see what this brings out yeah I think it works better as a portrait image doesn't it I don't really want the um, the branches in on on the right hand side, so I'm just going to make sure I'm properly set up. That robin's coming back again. Maybe got an interest in photography. Right. Adjust your filter. There we go. I'll see what that gives me. 
eight seconds. Oh, it's cold. Here we go. Now, I didn't get my audible warning for the highlight blown out, but it looks very, very bright there on, on the fell top. So I'm going to take a second at half that exposure at four seconds with a view to... Uh, Yeah, see, see, look at the difference between contrast between the foreground there and the uh, the background. So what I said earlier about where the light will fall, I'm being proved a bit wrong there because the light is coming down into the foreground. There's, I can't see any way how the direct foreground can get um, any light because we're just round the corner for this crag, so that I don't think it's going to get any lighter than that in the foreground which that leaves us with a very extremely high contrast scene there which i don't think is a problem we can we can work with that but it's it's almost glowing now and uh, and that is absolutely fantastic i'm thinking a square crop for this one using a square crop so we've got this diagonal line of shadow so I'm going to use the shadow line as a feature of the bottom of the image there so that's the original shot and then I'll crop it into a square and that will give us a, a, a bit of a different element in the bottom, bottom of it right what I'm going to do as well I'm going to try and move to here and see if I can get panoramic image of um, just make sure my tripod heads level there make sure everything's tight because I don't want anything wobbling about retake my focus point two and a half seconds and then I'm just going to swing around and see if I can get a, a bit more of the shoreline in there we go Yeah, you see the, the difference between the dark and the light there is uh, is quite stark when when you look at the the shore over the uh, over the lake there. That's that's got some beautiful light on it at the minute, really subtle. So I think by joining those shots together, we'll. Uh, in fact, I might just take another one to get that tree in, but I don't want that tree in. But I want more of the the damming. So. I'm going to have to move down again. Yeah, that's quite a nice silhouette of that tree there. Right, so I'm going to join them together and we'll see what that looks like. And uh, see if I can make anything of that. In fact, it might be worth taking another one from the side so I can get that large Scots pine in as well. Let's see if I can join that to the panoramic party as well and see where we go I'm thinking panoramic there because I've got this fence in the foreground so uh, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to chop that out whatever happens so the other thing as well is I've got these tall sort of well little trees here which if I moved to here them trees there are then blocking out my foreground but if I rotate the camera you can see I get a nice view of the dam now, but I lose I lose my foreground because I've got those trees in the way. I'll maybe just take one of down here where we've got Dale Head with snow on its head. We've got the the dam in the middle, these nice line of trees, and then the water obviously. And that's overexposed, isn't it? I might be able to save it, but just adjust my filter a little bit. Shoot it again. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice though. Right, I think what I'll do is I might just take another one and rotate slightly. See if I can join that onto it and uh, make a wider panoramic perspective. 
So it's, it's, it's uh, so there we go. That's the second shot, and we'll, uh, I'll join, um, I'll join those together, and we'll see how that looks out. So it's interesting how this scene's developed, because it's re it really has come to life with just a little bit of light, hasn't it? I mean, when you look at that now, compared to what it was like when I arrived not long ago, the addition of the addition of you know direct sunlight on these autumnal colours is really making that image pop. So uh, yeah, quite quite glad I stopped there for that. Now it's a it's a real shame that tree's there. Because I would love to be able to rotate that and take another shot, but that tree's just going to block out the dam. Here we go, let's have a look. And I'll join those two together as well and we'll see how that looks. Okay, so there's a, there's a very, very strong image, I think, to be had from here, especially with these autumnal colours and <clears throat> what I like about what I like about this breaking it down and this is something I always try and understand when I'm in location is I I can I can see the path going through the the foreground there it's uh, it's maybe not that obvious but it, it is there it cuts through those uh, those trees on either side you've got the mixed species of trees with all their different colors and then you've got the depth what goes in and and one of the really strong elements of this image to me and I don't know if you've picked up on it yet, is the fence posts going up the crag in the distance. You can see this line of fence posts, what obviously mimic the contours of the um, of the crag, and they go right up into the top there to that um, Scots pine tree. And I think that could add a really interesting element to that, to that image. You know, it, the path is pulling you in, the colours lifting you up, and then all of a sudden out of the trees, you get these line of posts, what, once they're illuminated they really stand out and uh, let me just take a another shot of that and we can study that in detail to see if that's actually working or if I'm just talking rubbish but that's what I'm seeing and that's what's kind of doing it for me so there we go I think um, I think a portrait image is the stronger option here purely and simply because of the the depth to the scene so I'm going to see if I can uh, reposition myself a little bit to to pull it out I've got the wire from the fence in the foreground I can bend it out the way a tiny bit but I can just crop that out probably and again I've got this really strong diagonal line of light of light and shadow and then you've got the coniferous trees coming over on the side there's a lot going on there you know people will just drive past this and not see it and and that that is a really strong image i think it could be stronger if I got the edge of those coniferous trees in. So if I move across here a tiny bit more. Yeah, I think you might, I might be losing it there because you're introdu I'm introducing, I'll just take the shot so you can see, but you, you're bringing in the top of this little tree, this little silver birch down in the bottom right corner, which you can see that there. So you've got the silver birch bottom right corner. You do, get more of the green coniferous trees on the diagonal of the the horizon line but you may be moving the balance of the scene around a bit so i'm not quite sure about that but just admiring it for a minute there's uh, there's a lot going on it's fantastic and then you've got your fence your, your gate and your fence post which is a, I, I took an image from there the other week and that's really shining bright now good okay well i'm going to leave it there for now i think i've uh, 
satisfied myself with creating an image what uh, an hour an hour or so ago I didn't even know existed so uh, that's a wonderful achievement for a Sunday morning and uh, we'll see where we go from there so I'll run through the images in a bit of a slideshow here again where you can uh, give me your thoughts and opinions on on them in the comments below that would be good and uh, choose your favorite and let me know which one you like best and why and uh, I'll catch you again on, on the next video hopefully and uh, thanks again for all your comments, likes and supports and it's, it's good to see some regular people commenting and some new faces coming along as well and uh, yeah, thank you very much. I'll see you again soon. All the best for now. Bye bye.